Hey guys, it's me, Holly Madison. I am back. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am reacting to Girls Next Door season one, episode eight. If you'd hit the like and I just kicked my phone over. If you'd hit the like and subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. And let's get going with the show. So this episode was the last episode out of the first chunk that E ordered from Playboy. They initially ordered eight episodes, so this was the last one we didn't get paid for, and yeah, we didn't know if it was gonna be picked up for more episodes or not. So when we were doing this episode, we thought it might be the last one, so let's see how it goes. It's um, called Midsummer Night's Dream, so it's about the Midsummer Night's Dream party, which was the biggest party at the mansion. So it's opening with us at Trashy Lingerie, and this is where we went for every party because they would make really great custom costumes. We would come in with an idea and they would just sketch it up and make it for us. I think Bridget's doing like a Greek goddess type thing or like a Roman type outfit, if I remember correctly, like a lingerie toga. I borrowed my outfit from a store in Beverly Hills called Barachi. It's still there actually, they moved. It's like over where the big Starbucks used to be, like where Wilshire meets Santa Monica. And they would just always make these really gorgeous sparkly gowns. So I borrowed like a very tiny like bustier with a little bit of a skirt from them. And it was really gorgeous. Just the fabric was so intricate and beautiful. It's showing the party and it's just, it looks so dated now. It's just funny to me. Excuse me, they just showed Hayden Christensen on here looking hot. It's crazy how giant this tent was in the backyard and just how big the party was. Like, even though the parties back then were really hard to get into and the guest list was pretty exclusive, it was still like a thousand people at the party, I think. So this is the episode where we give Bridget's sister Anastasia a makeover before the Midsummer Night's Dream party. It's crazy they say Anastasia felt fat and she's like clearly not fat. I just think in this environment, everybody felt fat. I don't know anybody who didn't. I, I felt fat. This is Destiny talking about the sleep diet where you like sleep so long you forget to eat. It shows Bridget and Anastasia going to Skin Spa. This is our friend, Jonathan Spa. So this is a place we go semi-regularly. A massage sounds so good right now. I haven't really got back on the massage train that much since the pandemic, but I need to. I forget the name of this place they went. They just showed it and I wasn't looking, but I forget the name of this place they went for lingerie, but I know Bridget used to like to go there a lot. It's very like feminine, old fashioned type of little lingerie outfits. Claire Pettibone, that's what it was called. Oh my God, it has her dropping off her cat to get groomed. And I remember how they like intercut Anastasia getting a bikini wax with the cat getting groomed, which is kind of funny. I'm watching these episodes and realizing like I really got away with doing the least. Like I am not in these episodes very much. <laughs> okay, I'm taking Anastasia to Mel's Diner for lunch and I drew her a little picture and I gave her a box and I forgot what's in the box. So let's see. Oh, it's like the padded bra inserts. <laughs> I'm a boob girl, what can I say? Oh my God, these boob inserts are weird though. Like they have a nipple constructed onto them. Okay, we're talking about pubic hair and power muffs. And I forgot that I was the one who took her to get waxed. Like I remember seeing this footage over and over again so well, but I forgot that I was the one that actually took her there in real life. Maybe because I wasn't actually back there in the room with her. That's why I don't remember it that well, but. And this lady who runs the Pink Cheek Salon in the Valley, I've been there before since. She's just really funny. She's a character. Gizmo is such a Halloween cat right now. And that reminds me, I'm gonna try and post as many of these as I can so I can get to our first Halloween episode before Halloween because a lot of you guys have been asking for the Halloween episodes and I don't wanna do them out of order, but I'll try, I'll try and get to that one before Halloween. So I'm racing through. I hope I post this before Halloween, otherwise my shirt will not be appropriate. Although I, I might like to wear this all year. It's really crazy looking back, watching them set up for the parties and just seeing what an industry it was and like, you know, the commercial kitchen and just all the stuff they had to do and how big it was. Like, of course, you know, I was there, I remember it, but I don't know, just something about the shots makes it look even bigger than I remember it being. It's just crazy. They're doing the painted ladies in the gym where they would wear only paint. And I remember thinking those women were so brave, but I'm not really sure why I thought that because we're all walking around basically naked all the time anyway. I mean, maybe it's because nothing was like covering their crotch. Maybe they thought that was like super brave, but I don't know. 
Oh my God, they're showing the footage of Kendra again as a painted lady. They kept reusing that footage over and over and over. There I am as a sheet ghost. I guess I was trying to make an outfit, but I didn't finish it in time. A little Wednesday, still so little. Aw, so cute. I'd like to walk around with a veil, I think, just in day-to-day -day life. Oh, Laurent and Gary, the hairstylist. It makes me so happy to see them. I've actually been back to Laurent's salon. Blah, 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 blah. Laurent's salon recently, so that was fun. I usually get my hair done in Vegas, but it's nice to stop by there too sometimes because I love seeing them. <laughs> Showing Hef's barber and he's like, I've always been the type of guy who wants to help people. And I don't know why that came off so funny to me. <laughs> Humanitarian. No, I'm not making fun of it. I'm like, I know people love to do those kind of jobs because it makes people feel better about themselves. But I don't know. It just made me laugh the way he said it. This is Anastasia's extension reveal. I think they look fabulous. They match the color so well. Bridget has a really cool hairstyle. She had like gold snakes in her hair and it was like all curly and super cute. I'm yawning. It was really important to me to look good at the parties because I remember the very first party I went to up there. It was a Midsummer Night's Dream party and Hef was dating these twins. I know, dating twins. But anyway, but they looked gorgeous. I just thought they were the prettiest people I had ever seen. And I always wanted to try and look that good to like represent. I can see in these interviews, this is when I start wearing wigs because my hair was just so dry and brittle and I didn't want to style it all the time. And the extensions were bad. Oh, Anastasia looks so cute. So she comes out, she looks absolutely adorable. She looks so good. You can see my dress in this scene. I love it. Just the fabric was so intricate and so pretty. And everybody just looks really freaking good. Oh, Bridget's mom is there and she looks so cute. She's all in her little blue lace outfit. <laughs> there we all are waiting for her to come downstairs. <laughs> I'd be so, she looks so nervous. I would be. You guys, in the shot, you can see like dog poop stains on the carpet. I'm not joking. Oh my God, there's this interview where I'm literally like, Midsummer Night's Dream Party was the best because, and it's like, I'm struggling to think like, why was it the best? <laughs> I feel like the Midsummer Night's Dream parties that made the most impression on me were like the first ones I went to because that was the first time I ever saw the mansion and everything. But going as a girlfriend, it like wasn't as fun because you were just, you had like all eyes on you and, and you couldn't really do anything. You were just a you were just supposed to sit at the table or dance right next to the table. You couldn't really like go get crazy or like meet people or anything. And it's funny at the end of this episode, they do kind of a wrap up of like we, what we all want to do in the future because we thought this was going to be the last episode. Like we had no idea it was going to get ordered for more. We had no idea it was going to go on for five seasons. Bridget's wrap up is like my dream came true. I got to post for the magazine and having Anastasia and my mom here is really cool. I can't wait to see where this goes next. And I say my goals are to get my degree and have kids and get some more dogs. I did the last two. I never ended up getting my degree because I, I don't know what I would get a degree in or, and I've never had time. Like I've always been busy with other things. So I think it was always so important to me to graduate college because I was the first person in my family to not graduate college and not finish because I dropped out halfway through. And, you know, back then, back in like the early 2000s, it was still thought of as like, you need to finish college or you're not smart or you need to finish college or you're never going anywhere. So I always had this guilt. And I remember when I lived at the mansion, I had this recurring nightmare of not graduating high school, which I always got good grades in high school. Like there was never any um, risk of me not graduating high school, but I would always have this nightmare that I wasn't going to graduate high school. And I think where that came from is I just had this really heavy guilt for not finishing college. So I always had it in the back of my mind, like, oh, I'll go back to college someday. I'll finish that. But then it's like, why? I, I can't think of one thing I would go back to college for to study that would help me with anything I want to do now. Even with writing, I feel like I can learn self-study by reading books and taking online courses and stuff. So and I think the fact that they end with Kendra last, who's just like, I just want to live a normal life. Um, it just like is more of an example of how they always had her set up to be the main character. Like in the first three episodes, you can really see it. But here when they're like ending the whole show with like her, 
not that I'm saying it necessarily should have been me or Bridget, but it's just like it rounds out that whole agenda. So takeaways from this episode, I actually don't have anything negative to say about this episode for once, the first one out of eight. I actually think this was like peak for our show. I think it was a really good episode. It was cute, it was funny, it was heartwarming. There was a lot of eye candy. There's nothing negative I have to say about it. I don't even have like a bad takeaway. My favorite thing about the episode, I think it was just seeing Anastasia and like how fun that whole thing was and how cute she looked and um, how much fun that whole thing was. And also it's just kind of weird to look back at those parties because I remember them one way, but when I look back and see them on TV, it looks so dated. So it's just kind of funny. It's just kind of funny to see your own life through the lens of like retro. Like when you realize you're looking back at certain parts of your life and you're like, whoa, that's like retro now. It's just weird. So anyway, I hope you come back and join me for the next episode. The next episode is going to be episode nine. We're shooting the cover of our Playboy pictorial. And this was the first episode we did when they ordered the second half of season one. So I will see you then. Bye.